My wali rejects good suitors without me knowing purely because of their caste or race. I almost fell into zina because of this. Nothing is an excuse for zina, of course, and alhamdulillah I didn't, but I was in a very bad place. Somebody responded to this confession that my wife received on her Instagram page and said, Could you ask, could you tell your husband to make a video on this one, sis? This has happened to me too, and every time I mention someone to my dad, he has an attitude and doesn't want any part in it. I try to do things completely halal, but he says, keep me out of it and do what you want and doesn't agree. <laughs> I understand. Literally makes the haram easier to attain. More students of knowledge and public speakers from the brothers need to speak on this because it's oppression at this point. All right, let's address the first issue first, okay? My wali rejects good suitors without me knowing purely because of their race or caste. Now, there is something called homogeneity, I believe is the word, okay, which is marrying within your race or caste, okay? And there is something to be said about sticking or marrying within your race not caste let's put caste aside but marrying within your ethnicity at least okay because there is some common ground some common understanding with regards to cultural nuances which can often be uh, an issue of great import an important issue when it comes to the topic of marriage like there is sub such a thing as cultural clashing okay so there is something to be said about that However, to purely and categorically reject a suitor based purely and categorically on his race, meaning you don't even give him a chance, you don't even look into the issue, now you're going to start creating issues. Now you're going to wonder why your daughter's coming home late at night and you start wondering what's she doing. And then you start questioning her and pressuring her and asking her and and you have these suspicions as to what she's doing. Let me just put those suspicions to rest for you. She's probably getting her back blown out, bro. Just, you know, just had to let you had to let you know that one. Why? Well, she looks at you and she thinks, I have a problem. That problem is I would like to get married. The other problem is my dad is not trying to help me get married. Or if he claims to be to trying to help me to get married, he is not willing to consider or open the door to men from other races or ethnicities. I'm Arab. Okay, well, I mean, where I come from, they don't consider themselves Arabs. They consider themselves Berbers. Okay, well, whatever, we speak Arabic. Potato, tomato, tomato. I'm half Algerian, half English. One of my sisters, she married a Tunisian brother. So... Arab, okay, alhamdulillah, excellent brother, mashallah, very good, and you know, they, they get on very well, alhamdulillah, Allahumma barik. One of my other sisters married a Bangladeshi brother, actually half Bangladeshi, half Pakistani. Now you would have thought, oh wow, you know, how did that, how did she make that? The brother is an excellent brother, alhamdulillah, and they gel, they get on together, they get on very well. Khalas, that's it, that's what matters the most, his deen is on point, his character is on point. And mashallah, alhamdulillah, he takes care of himself from a professional regard as well. Okay, what more do you want to ask for? What more do you want to ask for? Is this something that happens commonly, whereby an Arab or Berber, whatever you want to call it, marrying into a South Asian family, particularly Arab men allowing their daughters to go into a South Asian family? Now, this is very uncommon. It's very uncommon. But if the brother's a good brother... Khalas, he comes from a good family as well. His parents are good. His family is good. Alhamdulillah, bismillah, mashallah. Now I understand, believe, I believe me, I do understand why you would have an inclination or a preference towards staying within your own race. I get it. But, and here's where we have to draw the line. If you are going to categorically turn someone down just because he is Pakistani, Caribbean. Bangladeshi. Fill in the blank. This is where we open up the door to Zina. This is where we open up the door to Zina. This is where we open up the door to problems. 
And I speak to you fathers right now who somehow want to live with their head in the sand. My, one, one brother contacted me and said to me, Mahdi, you know, I've been watching your videos and so on. And I always had a feeling that it was getting late for my sister. But now, you know, you've made me realize how late it is. And I was like, well, you know, what's the situation? He's like, well, my sister's 37 years old, never been married before, still lives at home. And my dad is still telling her she has time. What time? What time? The No Strings Nikah app is now live. You can download it on Google Play, Android or the App Store. And remember, it was developed specifically with one type of individual in mind. If you are a sister who has been married twice before, typically twice plus before, but sometimes even once, and you have children from one or both of those marriages, I know that the thought of you marrying again for a second, third, fourth, fifth time and integrating a man full time into your yard and him putting a cupboard there and having to deal with him on a full time basis, I know that that is something that is very overwhelming for many of you sisters. No strings nikah is a solution to this problem because I also know you still have physical needs that you want meeting sometimes and you want to enjoy the nice parts of a relationship, of a marriage in halal, going out, having fun, cinema, whatever the case may be. If you think you fit that bill, No Strings Nikah might be for you. You can download it on the App Store or Android now. What time, bruv? What, what, what time? She is on the brink of becoming biologically useless what, what, from, a, from a reproductive perspective. What time are you talking about? She might even be entering perimenopause soon. She's certainly past the age of geriatric pregnancy, 35 years old. And, and typically women who have not started the baby machine in their 20s struggle greatly to have children in their 30s. And the irony is women who have started the baby machine in their late teens or 20s, they can continue to have children in their 30s, often with, with relative ease, even into their late 30s, sometimes even 40s. What time? Now this sister, she has, she's literally expiring, Allah al mustan and her dad's still telling her, you have time, you have time. And I know a lot of dads have an issue with their daughters getting married in, in general anyway the whole thought of a man doing to my daughter what i do to her mum no no this is this that's the uh, memory overload and my brain's about to burst it's too much all right fine no what do you think she's gonna do bro she's a human being either she's gonna commit zina or she's gonna develop some type of masturbation slash porn slash something else addiction of some sort she's a human being what do you expect to happen so although I empathize with the, 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 the oftentimes a benefit of marrying within your own ethnicity because there is some understanding of cultural nuances and you know you kind of get each other. I get it. Believe me, I get it. That doesn't necessarily mean that you should rule out a brother or a sister just purely because he is filling the blank of his ethnicity. That's the first thing. Now, let's address the response to this comment as well. This has happened to me too. And every time I mention someone to my dad, he has an attitude and doesn't want any part in it. I try to do things completely halal, but he says, keep me out of it and do what you want and doesn't agree. Well, what does that mean? Do what you want. Commit zina? Or get married behind your back and then uh, I lose the favor of the family? Because look, here's the thing. A daughter she's been, who has been raised with her father, she doesn't want to lose her dad just by, because she's getting married again. She doesn't want to lose him. She would much prefer to have her father on her side. But if you're going to force her into a corner and not help her, not make it clear to her that, Habibti, I'm on your side. I'm on your side. And by the way, it should be you looking for a husband for her as opposed to her looking for a husband for herself. And this is another thing. When a girl knows, my 16-year-old knows, she knows, I'm on your side. I've got you. And she has put that responsibility firmly in my hands to help her find a suitor. She's not bothered about looking for someone for herself because she knows that I've got her. I've got you. You don't need to worry about that. 
When a woman knows that you've got her and that you are open as well, and you are open to considering a brother and considering firstly and foremostly his deen and his character, his akhlaq, yeah, you're open like that, believe me, she's going to have confidence in you. It's when you don't communicate this openly and demonstrate it with your actions as well, that's when she's like, well, you know what? I've got to take care of number one. I've got to take care of myself. And women are typically terrible choosers of men. Sorry to say, ladies, you are. You make terrible choices for yourself because you, are, you have an emotional bent. Whereas men, we are able to sift and sieve. However, I don't blame you if you find yourself in a situation like this, whereby your wali is not on your side. He doesn't have your back. So to the brothers, I say to you this, and hear me, hear me carefully. If you don't have your daughter's back, next man is going to be blowing her back.